Hi there, my name is Morgan Summerlin. I'm a Master of Arts candidate in Medical and Biological Illustration, and this is my presentation on my master's thesis. My thesis investigated encouraging HIV-positive organ transplantation using novel modular animations. So this is a representation of the organ donor pool in the United States before the AIDS epidemic in the 1980s. During the epidemic, highly infectious HIV was rapidly spreading through segments of the U.S. population. As a protective measure, the government prohibited the use of organs from people with HIV in organ transplantation. Today, however, someone with HIV under continuous use of HIV medicines can live a long and healthy life with essentially no risk of transmitting HIV. People with HIV on the organ waitlist face an increased risk of dying and lowered access to transplantation. Fortunately, the HOPE Act of 2013 reversed this outdated ban, which provides more organs for people with HIV on the waitlist. Despite this great change, transplants are not reaching their maximum potential of 300 to 500 deceased donors every year. This is because of a lack of awareness in the public, incomplete implementation of HOPE Act policy in the transplant system, and lingering HIV stigma in the organ donation system. This is because there is insufficient visual outreach material to educate a variety of audiences. People living with HIV, trauma center nurses that recommend patients for organ donation, organ procurement organizations that screen potential donors, national transplant centers, infectious disease physicians, and patients with HIV on the waitlist who are considering receiving an organ from a donor with HIV. The most essential audiences were identified. The largest losses of potential donors is from people living with HIV not being aware that they can become organ donors, and that nurses and OPO representatives may not be referring patients with HIV for donation because of a preconceived stigma against HIV. The first goal of this project was to explain the HOPE Act and the biological risks of HIV-positive transplantation in a novel modular animation workflow. The second was to produce two standalone animations created from reusable and unique call-to-action clips that address the two critical audiences. Each animation consisted of reusable introduction, body, and conclusion clips, with a unique call-to-action clip tacked on at the end that addresses each audience on what they can do to help. A script was developed with language comfortable for both audiences, both patients and those in healthcare. The script was mostly written at the patient level, however, certain higher level medical terms were used, such as HIV superinfection. Additionally, someone with an HIV infection should be referred to with person first language as a person living with HIV. Using terminology specific to patients with HIV will help to prepare those in the organ donation system to communicate with these patients. When discussing organ transplantation in the community of people living with HIV, we explored representational and metaphorical storytelling. The following system of icons was developed to visually differentiate donors and recipients both with and without HIV. The first animation created for this project encouraged people living with HIV to consider registering to be an organ donor, and the second asks nurses and OPO representatives to consider all patients equally when referring patients for donation regardless of HIV status. I will now present the animation addressed to people living with HIV. Nearly 114,000 people in the United States are currently in need of an organ transplant. Every day, over 100 people are added to the waitlist, and 20 will die having never received the life-saving transplant they needed. A growing number of those waiting are also living with HIV and are more likely to die waiting for a transplant. In the past, organs from donors with HIV were considered unsafe and were banned from use in transplantation. Historically, people with HIV received organ donations from people without HIV. However, studies show that they can also receive organs from people with HIV with equally successful outcomes. The HIV Organ Policy Equity Act, or HOPE Act, was passed in 2013 and legalized transplanting organs from donors with HIV to people who also have HIV. Thanks to the HOPE Act, people in need of an organ are more likely to receive a transplant. 
Transplanting organs between donors and recipients with HIV provides more organs for people without HIV and creates more life-saving transplants every year. How is it possible that patients with HIV can receive organs from donors who also have HIV? HIV is a virus that primarily infects the body's white blood cells. The virus enters a host cell where it makes copies of itself using the host cell's machinery. As it replicates, HIV has the ability to mutate and change over time, which creates unique strains of HIV that can differ from person to person. The virus then leaves the cell to locate a new host and continue its life cycle. HIV medicines work by blocking replication and preventing the spread of HIV to other cells, which minimizes levels of HIV in the body. Decades of research into HIV medicines has allowed HIV to become a controlled condition rather than a deadly disease. However, when HIV mutates, it can become resistant to medication. Fortunately, there are multiple classes of HIV medicines that block HIV replication in different ways. If HIV becomes resistant to one class of medicines, others can be substituted to control an HIV infection. When someone with HIV is given an organ from a donor with HIV, new strains of the virus can be introduced with the organ. Fortunately, the recipient's current HIV medicines are likely to control the new strains from the donor. However, the recipient could become infected with the new strains in addition to their existing HIV infection. This is called superinfection. If superinfection occurs, different HIV medicines will be tried until an effective new combination is found. Fortunately, studies show that the risk of superinfection is low compared to the greater risk of dying while waiting for an organ. Organ transplantation between donors and recipients with HIV is an important step towards shortening the waitlist for organ transplants. Under the HOPE Act, 500 to 600 new donors are expected to be available in the U.S. annually, and up to 10,000 people with HIV could benefit from this change. Your support and participation can help maximize these life-saving transplants. We ask that you consider registering to be an organ donor because that one decision could save lives. Register at the DMV or online at registerme.org and talk to your friends and family to make your decision about organ donation known. You do not have to disclose your HIV status in order to register. We also ask that you help raise awareness of the importance of organ donation in the community of people living with HIV to continue these life-saving transplants. The animations were created for reusable introduction, body, and conclusion clips, as well as call-to-action clips that were customized to each audience. When shared with the intended audiences, they are expected to decrease HIV stigma in donor referrals and encourage participation in HIV-positive transplantation. The remaining clips for the other target audiences may be completed to maximize outreach, and the animations will be shared at various venues, including HIV clinics and the meetings I have listed here. In the future, a pre- and post-test may be administered to test the effectiveness of educational aspects of the animations. I'd like to thank my advisor, David Reaney, in the Department of Art as Applied to Medicine, my preceptors, Dr. Christine Duran and Dr. Doris Segev, and Brianna Doby from the Hope in Action team. Thank you for your attention, and I hope you've learned about how the Hope Act has brought positive change to the community of people living with HIV.